Okay, I was just recently asked about different types of screws that I use and what I recommend to have. So I wanted to do a short video on the type of screws that I commonly use and you may have different needs than I have, but I'll bet you that over time you'll realize that you probably only need a few different types of screws, but you'll need different lengths of them. And so that's kind of what I wanted to talk about was the different types that I use and the different lengths, because the lengths are really going to be important as you connect different uh, thicknesses of material. Okay, This is my toolbox that I take to uh, my jobs and it's pretty cool. It holds my drills and it holds different screws. So I can install pretty much most things with just this box. And I have quite a few things in here. Now, I did a, um, a video on this particular toolbox and what I have in it for um, job site, top installations and stuff. So if you want to watch that, uh, you should check it out because you know it covers everything. But I'm just going to go over some of the um, different screws I have in here. Now, when I did that video, I didn't have labels, but I have since changed that and actually put some um, green tape and wrote the uh, links only because it just makes it a little bit simpler for me or anybody that's helping me to know where things go, um, mainly for people that are helping me. But as you'll notice that, um, you'll notice first off that there's a lot of different types of screws in here and you'll see first off that they all look similar and that they're all kind of this chrome color and th this zinc material is kind of what I prefer versus like a black or um, bronze or brass so this is a zinc plated and I prefer square drive square drive over Phillips over Spax. Uh, Spax is definitely a, um, um, a better screw than a Phillips, in my opinion, for um, most stuff, but I prefer square. Some screws you can get square or you can get a combo drive. And combo work well for some applications, um, not for others. So a combo for an inch and a quarter screw is a perfect type of screw. So I could do a Phillips or I could do a square drive. Now the square, the, the size of the square and size of the Phillips are number two, which are pretty much the standard for normal everyday screws. When you get into smaller screws, uh, that they'll go up to a number or they'll go down to a number one, a Phillips and a square number one. But for normal everyday screws, they're all number twos, Phillips and square. If you're building cabinets, this is what you should be using. These are premium grade. These are not imported. These will not snap under some serious load. Even if you crank them down with an impact gun, which I don't use. I mean, I guess you probably could if you're going into some seriously hard wood like maple and you kept driving it. It probably would break at some point, but it's going to take some serious effort to do it. You know, when I use these, I, I never break these. First things first, uh, the sizes. These are all cabinet install screws. So inch and a quarter, inch and five eighths. Actually, I'm almost out of those. I need to grab some more. Uh, those are a little bit harder to find. Inch and a half, inch and three quarter. The one inch ones are back here because I don't use these very frequently. Um, and these ones are particularly good for installing uh, inset door hinges. And these are three quarter inch. These are actually lath type screws. So if you um, screw like wire to houses, this is what you would use for like metal lath and or going into metal. But they work exceptionally well for inset hinges. Two and a half, two inch, and to round it out, three inch. 
So if I'm driving a cabinet into a house and I want to secure it, normally I use a three inch screw. And the sizes of these guys are all um, sevens and eights. Um, primarily they're sevens, but some of them are eights. And the difference between a seven and an eight is um, the thickness of it. So sometimes you'll notice that the main body of the screw is a little bit thicker than um, some other screws. Well, as the number implies, six, seven, eight, as the number gets bigger, the screw gets bigger. So if you want a thicker screw, you go up to an eight or a nine or a 10, whatever. You'll notice if you go to the store and see the differences, you'll notice the size difference is pretty crazy. But for normal cabinet construction, a seven is a perfect size and an eight. So that's pretty much what I use, uh, sevens and eights. Now for little screws, uh, and that's for applications like, let's say I'm, I'm uh, fastening a hinge to a cabinet door. I'm gonna use these uh, three quarter inch and or five eighths inch. And these will also go into the face frame. So if I'm securing the actual hinge to the cabinet, I could use these. These are actually Phillips. And what's nice about these is that they have a sharp point and they have a drilling auger tip. So the auger tip, is the same as these other screws they have as well. It helps drive these screws even if you're not pre-drilling holes. So it's a pretty nice feature. But more importantly for me, I love the fact that they're sharp points. They go in quickly into the wood. You don't have to sit there spinning and spinning before these things go in. So if you want something quick and easy, get these type of screws. Now, I love the fact that these are Phillips, but I would prefer these to be square too. However, Mostly my supplier doesn't have square drive, um, three quarter inch and five eighths. So I end up just getting the Phillips, which is cool. It's probably a little bit better um, to have the Phillips as a lot of times people that are removing these guys, like for instance, the um, painters, uh, oftentimes they'll be removing these. So using Phillips is probably better for them. Um, same thing, five eighths, but these are all number sixes. Now, if you secure, um, drawer slides you can't use number sixes for the type of slides i use the um undermount type uh, bloom slides the these guys will actually go through the holes although they'll appear like they're working as soon as you drive force onto them they'll actually go right through the hole in the hinge or the in the slide so what i have to use instead are these ones and these ones have a little bit bigger head. You can see that. If I take the standard size number six right there and I compare it to the, the number seven, look at the difference in the size. Now, it, let's take a look at the slide. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, although I, many people, including myself, used to think that number six has worked with these and it, it's like, oh yeah, they fit perfectly, right? They go in nice and they don't go through. Here's the problem. You may find yourself securing these to a cabinet and think they're nice and secure, but then when you go to put weight on these drawers and or if you tightened them up tightly, you'll notice that they actually pull through. Let's take a look at the number seven in that same hole and you can see that's nice. So that's the way it should fit right in there. And it actually fits perfectly flush as it sits into that little recess and it will not go through. These are my five eighths number sevens if I needed them. Um, next is gonna be uh, shelf pins. So, you know, obviously that's not a screw but I keep these in here as well. So this top drawer is kind of like my main everyday go-to drawer. My specialty fasteners um, are back here and these are what are known as um, Panhead Craig pocket screws. So they have um, washer heads and they have pan heads. So you can see the difference between the two right there. See how it's a little bit bigger? 
versus this guy right here. And actually you can get these in different lengths. Um, I primarily use one inch and one and a quarter, but you can get them certainly much longer than this. And you can get them in different textures as well um, and colors. So these are zinc and also they have the same drilling tip, uh, auger tip. I believe that's called a type 19. I could be, could be wrong on that, but I believe it's a type, a type 19, I believe, um, tip on that. So um, if you have, oh, and these are number sevens for the Craig screws that I use. These are coarse, but if you look over here, these are fine. The difference is, is that you can tell, um, you can look at the thread and it looks much different. This is a fine and this is a coarse and uh, clearly you can see the difference. This is definitely a little bit bigger. Uh, you can see it's going to probably be a little bit better for um, softer materials. This one is better for harder materials like let's say maple and oak uh, going through some really hard wood. This is kind of what you would want to use a fine thread. At least that's what I find. Um, the coarse thread I use primarily for um, softer woods like poplar and alder. Um, pretty much all face frames I build, I use the coarse thread, but occasionally I'll have to switch to a um, fine thread. And they're, they're um, both, again, number two, square drive. I love that. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to point out on these screws. If you look on the head of them, there's little bumps. And these little bumps, are called nibs. Isn't that a funny name? Nibs will countersink itself as you drive this in. It'll actually start driving in and you'll literally start cutting the wood as you go in and you'll find yourself trying, the screw will find itself trying to counterbore itself. So if you don't have a hole pre-drilled, Oftentimes with these screws, you can actually counter bore. Just be careful though, it's not gonna leave a very clean hole. So it's something that you're doing. Um, it's probably gonna be in an area where you don't need, need a clean hole. Uh, when I get to a job and let's say there's drawers involved or handles or knobs, which is pretty typical. So I have a selection of different lengths that I use. One inch for doors, standard issue. One and a quarter inch for certain uh, drawers, one and a half, one and five eighths, one and three quarters. And actually this area here has got some um, Euro screws. And there's also some two and two and a half inches in here because sometimes you get to jobs and you just never know. But these are all pretty standard sizes for uh, handles in the United States. Mostly they're number eight by 32. So that's the type of screw you would use if you're securing a knob to a cabinet or a handle. For a, um, a door or a drawer, a number eight by 32. So these are so standard, these are not metric. If you have uh, handles from let's say Pottery Barn, they will give you metric and those are metric handles. So you cannot use the standard Imperial um, screws like eight by 32. You have to get metric for those. Just a, just a note on that. Okay, um, as you can see, this thing's Pretty much got lots of stuff in it. And again, watch my video if you want to know everything I have in there. Okay, so when I get my um, screws, a lot of times I'll get them in bulk. Um, you save a ton of money doing it that way. But again, if you're not using these a lot, um, it's probably not worth getting them in bulk because, you know, they are expensive. But, you know, if you are using them a lot, it's, it'll save you a ton buying them in bulk. But otherwise, I'll go to my hardware suppliers and I can get them in like, you know, packs of whatever size I want. So 100, 200, whatever. Normally, I just get 100. Um, and these guys, 100 of these, um, you know, one and a quarter, one and a half, whatever size. These will actually last quite a while. But you can see, I mean, I've got tons of them up there. And essentially, I, this is my, um, you know supply for screws and if i need new ones i know that i'm running out 
you know, I'll just grab them. So not only do I have my glues up here, but I have my Craig screws. And again, I buy the biggest boxes I can because normally I save the most money doing it that way and I use them. So this is a 1200 pack of the Craig screws. Now I know there's other companies that make um, these type of screws for pocket hole joinery. However, I find that the Craig screws, in my opinion, I like them better. But some people, they might like different types of um, screws. So this is my um, shop drawer supply. Although my other one here, I can access as well. But it's really a nice thing to have a nice organized setup for your um, hardware. I made these particular drawers to fit this um, container. Now these containers actually came out of a metal, um, you know, stacking type of a system where you could put it on the wall or you can put it on your workbench. So I actually just took these guys out, figured out how wide to make the drawer and I made, that's how I sized these drawers. And you can see there's no play and it, they fit perfectly. Um, I can get lots of stuff in here and it's extremely efficient. As you can see front to back, I've only got about an inch of play. Um, so they work really well. And you know, over the time of, of, uh, having this, these plastic things have actually started to break, um, just by themselves or just disintegrating. So over time, I'll probably have to change these, but it's been pretty good. So I keep all my main screws that I would use at the job site. I also have them here primarily for backups. So when I run out of uh, screws in my uh, Festool box, I can just take them right out of here. So they have all the different sizes. However, I do have some screws in here that I don't have in my box. And some of them are um, specialty screws. Like for instance, if I'm drilling in um, these type of slides, you know, for the shop, I don't use these at the job site, but if I did, this is the best screw for that, right? Um, this particular screw, because it's got that nice washer head on there, um, pan head, whatever you want to call that guy. It's really nice. It's got that nice shoulder. So it'll secure right there. And it's just really nice um, to hold these type of slides. So if you're doing a lot of those type of slides, do yourself a favor and get some of these screws. These are great. Uh, this is half inch and they work great. Now, what are the other type of screws I have in here are um, the type of screws that I, when I was starting woodworking, I didn't know what was what. So I just went to Home Depot and I just picked out all the screws I could find and I just, you know, started loading them up in my drawers. One of the screws I picked out was what was considered a wood screw. This is a wood screw. These are a waste of money for me. This is a wood screw. If I were you and I was doing this all from the start, I wouldn't even look at those type of wood screws. In fact, mostly I wouldn't even go to the box store, like for instance, Home Depot to buy screws because their screws, they don't really have a very good selection of good screws. Unless your Home Depot is different than mine. Um, these, I, I, I have my suppliers that I buy from for all my hardware. And I never even get screws at Home Depot. The only ones I get at Home Depot are these ones. Um, these are the, uh, the wire lath type screws or going into metal for inset doors. So I buy those. Um, this also is a screw you can buy at um, the box store. And this is a screw that I don't use that often, but it, when you need one, you need one. This is called a trim head screw and a trim head screw. You can see the difference between the two. I mean, it's pretty, pretty vast. Um, clearly there's a huge difference between those two. And if you're driving in, let's say some, um, molding and you don't have a nail gun, this is a great, or if you want the uh, molding to be removable, this is a great option, especially if you're doing like dark wood and you want it to be kind of concealed, but yet you also want it to be able to take it apart. So using a trim head screw is a great option. However, you're not going to get a ton of holding power. As you can see, the head's not very big, 
but there are times when I've needed these screws and if I didn't have these, I would be really screwed. And these are actually pretty strong, but don't use an impact gun with these because you'll break them um, and set your clutch on your drill so that you don't over tighten these because you will snap these off. Again, these are number ones. So you can see the difference between those two sizes. One's a number one and one's a number two. Yeah, when you use a number one, uh, it kind of throws you off because you don't have, um, there's a couple things I don't have for number ones. I don't have a number one um, countersinking bit. So my countersinking bit only is for this size and bigger. So I don't actually have a countersinking bit for a small head like this. So if you want one, there are specialty countersinking bits that you can get. Um, another type of screw that I have, and actually when you need it, you need it. This is called a Euro screw. A Euro screw is designed to go into, what, what would you think? The shelf pinholes. If you have a slide that you're mounting to a cabinet, let's say you're, you're doing a pull out. And if you, if you ever notice that um, pull outs in like European style cabinets, they connect everything right to the um, shelf pinholes and they use these screws to do it. So five eighths or half inch, whatever the material you're working with is. And you can get longer ones, but generally that's what, what you're using. And these guys are great because they go right into those holes. So these are, these are sized specifically for five millimeter holes. And um, oftentimes you'll find hinges are also secured with these in a lot of um, track housing or um, Euro style cabinets that are built. And I, I imagine you can get them for quarter inch, but I don't have those. Euro screw. These guys work great. You can see how it sits nice and flush. Again, you have to have the proper holes for those. So if, if you wanted to use this type of screw, it's going to be going into a um, five millimeter uh, shelf pin holes that are over here. You can't have a screw sticking out like that. It'll just, it'll just scratch the drawer and bind. So use a screw like I showed you before that sets in there. Even if you use this type of screw, like a wood screw, just a standard issue cabinet screw, that guy you would think is good too, but look at that, it sits out there a little bit too. And trust me, you will actually grind the side of the drawer box if you try to use these screws. One type of screw that um, I would really recommend you don't use for uh, woodworking is what's called a drywall screw. And a drywall screw are great for hanging drywall, but these are not good for woodworking. And there's a couple of reasons why they're not great for woodworking. One is as you drive these guys in, um, the threads, if you notice, are all the way up to the top for one thing. I don't like that for, for driving two you know, cabinet parts together. Because what ends up happening is as you, as you put this in, it'll start pulling the um, piece you're working on away from the piece you're trying to connect it to. It's because of the threads all the way to the top. So what I like are um, screws that don't have threads all the way to the top, like this one. But also the type of thread here isn't conducive to woodworking. Now, a lot of people use these for uh, making cabinets, and that's probably because they just don't know what they should be using. Uh, but these, these aren't very good. So use this for drywall and um, use this for building cabinets and furniture. Sometimes I will be putting down Wonderboard. These type of screws are for Wonderboard or the equivalent of Wonderboard. And they're specially designed for that type of uh, application. They're pretty cool. So if you have uh, Wonderboard, Wonderboard is for using a um, uh, like a tile. When you're putting in like tile, sometimes you'll use Wonderboard and um, connect the tile to the Wonderboard. So, but the wonderboard has to be connected to the floor and that's what these screws do. And now these, I do get at uh, the box stores. I mean, there's a lot of type of screws I didn't talk about, but they're not typically screws that I use regularly. This is a screw that is actually really cool. It is uniquely designed. It's a big washer type head. So it gives you a lot of holding power, 
But what's unique about this is that as you drive this in, if you use in a, a, um, an impact gun to drive your screws in, this will sink itself and then it'll go flush with the surface. And then what's cool is that they actually have um, plugs that you put on here and they stick into that square drive recess and they're, um, they're flush. Uh, however, I don't use these on jobs. I use these primarily in the shop for um, holding cabinets to the wall or, um, you know, hanging things up on the wall because of the big uh, head on it. I like this uh, to hold stuff on the wall, but I don't normally use this for cabinets. Uh, but if you did want to try, these are really cool. Uh, the company that makes these is uh, Fast Cap. One more screw I wanted to talk about is a what's called a drawer front screw. This has a special purpose and you can use pocket screws for attaching drawer fronts. I do a lot, but if you need more adjustability in your drawer front, this is a great alternative to um, using uh, Craig screws or, po or pocket screws. The head is bigger. So what you do is you drill a bigger hole and when you attach your drawer fronts, it gives you room to move the drawer front and adjust it so it's a perfect uh, reveal all the way around. But, um, and these happen to be um, Phillips drive. However, they do make them in square drive, but um, these are great though, auger tip, and I find these really nice. Um, but, oh, another type of screw that's cool is a, um, are these little guys right here. And these are a little three quarter inch. They're self drilling. So they have that same auger tip. And these are number twos, but it's a very small uh, number six size. And I think it's really cool, these guys, because if you have things like that are dark that you're fastening, um, I use these a lot of times on jigs, but also th this is the main screw that I use for my tracks because in this material this guy here goes in there nicely and it sinks in there nicely so if you're wondering how to secure a lot of these tracks down you got to have to use a smaller sometimes you have to use a smaller head screw and these work perfectly so that's what is securing all my tracks to the uh, workbench here i think i got these at, at rockler um, and uh, woodcraft those two stores carry them Okay. Well, if you think of anything, if you have any more questions, uh, just let me know. All right. Have a great day.